All right, back with another fake rock project. What I've got here is an actual fake rock wall. Had never created one of these before. I had always created the cage furniture. So I actually got a, a fake rock wall, finally. Um, it's only for a 10 gallon, but you could take these uh, same techniques and scale it up to whatever size you've got. I did create this so that um, you could uh, remove it and put it back in. I think it's more sanitary to be able to do that, clean it better, but this is only a 10 gallon so if you were to create this for like 110 gallon it would obviously you probably need some help. It'd be a lot heavier because of the grout essentially. Um, but created this uh, with a little hide there, got one ledge, and it was one of the reasons why I've never created one of these things, uh, there's the hide, is you really want to research whether or not your pet has got expert climbing abilities. If it doesn't have expert climbing abilities, probably not a good idea to create ledges where, say, a bearded dragon could get way up in the air on, in like a 110 gallon tank and or anything else for that matter and being being in danger of falling so so as with all of the other projects you want to wear a dust mask kind of protect you so what I've got here I measured the back of this uh, 10 gallon tank and uh, knowing that because of the tile grout, this project is going to increase in size. I'm going to measure out a length that is essentially too small for the back on all sides so that you've got some room to work with. It's very easy to add to the sides of your project. It's very difficult to take away from the sides. So if I put this back in here, it should have, I'm not sure what I did, but it's at least an eighth inch, if not a half inch, on each side. So you want this play in there, and I'm measuring out a piece for the top to cut off so that there's, a, there's some play in the top as well as the sides. So again, you can always add to, if this bothers you, that it doesn't fit perfectly, but... You want to be able to fit it back into the cage, and it's much easier to add than to subtract. So with the hide or the ledge, it's actually both, I'm going to, I can't put this all the way over to the left, because then, because this is a top-loading tank, I wouldn't be able to, you know, get it down into the tank. So obviously this would be far preferable if you had a front-loading aquarium. Or tank. Glued this down with Loctite's Power Grab, just a really good ad adhesive. And cutting out the uh, front part of it. So it's essentially a really basic, boring looking piece at the moment. Very simple, you know, I would consider this a beginner level. So I'm just going to pick away at uh, some random size pieces of uh, polystyrene. If you're looking for a materials list to uh, really everything um, as far as these projects are concerned, go to the website, go to the uh, Frequently Asked Questions, the facts page. So with the rocks, you can either pick at them, or you can see what I've done here is uh, cut out a bevel to the edge. And you want to, you know, pick out some, uh, or create some different sized rocks. And it's essentially like a uh, reverse jigsaw puzzle. I'm creating the pieces and just, you know, figuring out where they fit. Again, gluing them all down with uh, the Loctite's power grab.
So I've got all of those, at least on the back, glued into position. You might want to occasionally do this where you make sure it's still fitting and still looking the way you want it. This being put it back in the cage occasionally. Gluing up, doing the same thing for the, the hide. So you can kind of camouflage it, make it look like it's uh, part of the wall. And here I'm going to cut away or pick away at the uh, straight edges. You want to try to eliminate these if possible. Try to make it look uh, more realistic. And creating a little extension to the uh, hide. So little pieces like this can add to the to the realism. So that's what it's looking like so far, ready ready for the grouting stage. Just using uh, ordinary non-sanded tile grout. So this is the stuff in between your your tiles and your kitchen and bathroom. Mixing together water and non-sanded grout. And I get a lot of emails um, concerning the, uh, the mixture of uh, grout to water for the, especially the first layer. You want to do at least two, preferably three or four. The more layers you do, the stronger it'll be. Um, usually I've said in the past, it's the consistency of like thin pancake batter, evidently. You know, the pancakes I make are a lot thicker than everybody else's. Um, because I'll get emails saying that uh, the layer the next morning has started to flake off. And, um, the fix to that is really to just add more, more grout, make a thicker batch, and add more layers of grout. The cracking that'll happen, you want to turn it over, by the way, as I'm doing the cracking that'll happen, again, that's normal. The fix to that is just, you know, add another layer of grout. It'll fill in the cracks, and uh, there won't be any problem. This is debatable because the, the back is not going to be in view, um, although I'm going to do it because technically the lizard could get to it. Plus, if you don't do this, your project is going to be unbalanced, which could lead to it's much more prone to breaking because one side of it is very heavy and the other side has absolutely no ground on it. For each additional layer I usually put, although you don't have to do this, uh, some sort of acrylic colored paint just so you can tell where you've been, where you haven't. Don't have to do this, um, but if you get caught away from the project it's essentially a no-brainer because you just look at the difference in color and tell where you haven't uh, covered yet. So this, I'm going to put this back in, make sure I can still fit it back into the cage. So if not, this is when you'd want to, you know, I've had to do that before or on uh, cage furniture where it did not fit. I had to shave off, cut off part of it because I pushed uh, the limit on the measurement. Here is the return of the poor man's paint gun, got a dollar store water bottle, got some acrylic uh, dark gray paint, mix it together with water so it's not going to be extremely opaque, some of that brown color is going to show through so you could get into some layers where you put maybe a little bit of gray down, a little bit of white, so a lot faster than using a paintbrush. Here what I'm doing is going in between the uh, rocks, um, trying to emphasize the crevices, using a very dark gray. I'm just trying to make it look as if uh, you know, these crevices go you know, deeper than they actually do. It just kind of makes the, the rocks themselves uh, jump out a little bit in how they look. Doing that with the, the hide as well. Now here, um, what I've done is loaded the paintbrush full of a very light gray and then removed most of the paint on a paper towel. 
and the texture that the grout has created um, will pull off a little bit of that paint that's left over on the, the paintbrush and you can get this really old rock look. But of course you don't have to do this. It's a really easy way of uh, adding some highlights and really making those rocks uh, pop out because they're going to contrast greatly with that really dark gray that you put uh, in between the crevices. So here we've got the return of Shields All. Um, you can find, again, in the facts section of the website, where to find this stuff or where to find Mod Podge, the other sealant that I've used. Shields All is good for both wet and dry environments. Um, Mod Podge is really just meant for dry environments, like uh, environments for bearded dragons. So your Shields All will be able to handle the high humidity environments. So what I'm going to do is seal front and back, underneath, all sides, at least four layers, and preferably if you can wait 72 hours in between, that's uh, apparently their full water repellency period in order for it to cure. As a last stage, uh, each sealant you, no matter what you choose, it's always going to have this sh shiny uh, finish. To it and what you can do is like in this case uh, I'm using gray colored sand it's non-toxic sand from uh, sand tastic and it just uh, using the same sealant as an adhesive for the sand it kind of counteracts the shininess so there you have it finally I've created a uh, fake rock wall backing for a reptile cage